Hey everybody, this is not a spring chicken. It's the day after the Oscars and one of the things that happens in Southern California is in the entertainment industry, everybody's recovering the day afterwards. Um, so, but anyway, news still does continue and we're going to bring old Cam on for comments on the headlines of today. And the White House gets involved with the Academy Awards. Oh yeah, okay. The, they basically, nobody knew, it was a total secret that they were going to have the best picture, which everybody knew was going to be, uh, what is it, Argo or something, or mm -hmm. because the, the President of the United States, when he was a young, per, a young uh, activist, basically condemned the United States for being involved in Iran, which resulted in a crisis. And, and so naturally, they decided, well, let's kiss the President's rear end and have it the best picture gave from the White House, and nobody will know who's going to get the best picture well, once they printed up more than one thing, everybody knew who was going to get the best picture then. So, and, yeah. I thought it sucked. A lot of people thought it was totally inappropriate last night. It looked like they were, you know, like it was a campaign thing for the President of the United States. Oh. Yeah, I mean, what? the only thing that didn't happen was Obama didn't come out and say, George Bush and the Republicans are causing this sequester. They expected that to happen. Well, maybe they thought it would help so they wouldn't be as stringent on the entertainment industry. Yeah. I don't know. No, oh, oh, well, it is funny. Okay, it's called Throw the Entertainment Industry Under the Wheels of the Obama Bus. This morning, after he, you know, gets all of these people, you know, we love the president, we love, we want, we want you to raise taxes on the wealthy. It turns out that the entertainment industry has picked up a billion and a half dollars in loot from the governments, you know, from state and federal government to make films. Mm. Much of that going mm. into the pockets of the people that are making a the president's thing, which is it's come something else this morning, which they also broke the news on. A lot of people do not like this president. It seems that one of the president's closest friends is getting three hundred fifty built three hundred fifty million dollar loan from the guarantee of the federal government mm -hmm. to open up health care things. Oh really? Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Personal friends of the president are now making money oh. off the government again, which crony cap crony capitalism they call it. And to praise Obama means you get an Oscar. Oh yeah. I have an Oscar though. Yeah. Right here. Well, I said that, um, okay, if you, okay, the movie, the Kathleen Bigelow movie, which basically was a movie showing how great the president was, got, didn't get anything because of the fact it was pro-military and a president, the president's in a conundrum. He wants to, he wants the people cheering him for getting Osama bin Laden, but he doesn't like the military. So what they did was they give it all kinds of nominations and then give it to the award, give it to the anti-military movie of which he also had a part to play in. Uh, and it's all over for the Republicans. Well, yeah, they're, they're, just, they're just being beat to death on this sequester thing, even though they took out a full ad last night giving Obama the award for the, for the biggest liar of the century because, you know, he created sequester, mm -hmm. he, he agreed to the spending cuts, he signed it into law, and then, you know, also he said that the only way we can stop sequester is that I will decide on who gets cut and you will have to raise taxes. Well, they mm -hmm. give him his tax raise. He's not getting another one until they actually have, I, I, listening on the news a few minutes ago, they said when this man actually puts real cuts on the table, we'll put, uh, cut, we'll cut income tax reform on the table. And he said his plan is he raises taxes, spends money, and never makes any real cuts. And then oh, really? on top of this, he said, no one that is currently working is going to lose a job. You will not see one hamburger patty get by because the same people are working. You will not see one air traffic controller fired. This is for the, this is from the budget. For, this is the, they, they increase. They increased the budget by 10% and are decreasing, decreasing the 10% uh, the by 2%, which actually now, because it's six months into the budget, is only one percent. It does. It's like paperclip money to the federal government. But our, our, as of, as of yesterday, our nuclear arsenal is in danger now because of what the Republicans are doing. Ah, uh, and Seth MacFarlane's Oscar monologue was endless and maybe racist and sexist. Well, they said it was endless and it was racist and sexist. But uh, they said basically. But they don't they write all those things before? They, they practice this. This all goes through before. Well, they all knew. Everyone knew that it was going to be this way. And they did it anyway because, okay, let's put it this way. The advertisers are looking for the audience, you know, uh, that aren't in the demographics that the Academy wants. They're, pr they're probably telling the people, we had a 19% increase in the prime demographics who the advertisers are not aiming for. You do not see young people's products being out to the Oscars because 
No one of that age watches the program in this country or out of this country. It's a it's an event for people that actually watch television, not not. But I look for um, like I said, we've been discussing this for a while. But uh, at, at Magic in Las Vegas, in the press room, I was talking to people that cover fashion at the Oscars, and they're all talking about the same thing: that they're mm -hmm. looking. They've already renamed the Academy Awards to the Oscars, and the host of the show is going to become more important mm -hmm. than the name of the show. That's kind of sad. And they're looking that they're going to make it uh, uh, achievement awards. They're going to have five, you know, like five people, at five actors that should have been, that didn't get what they need, should have gotten, which will then be nominated, and you'll vote for that. Five directors, five five movies that should have been given the Academy Award but never even got nominated. These are these are there's a lot of people out there in the industry that and movies that are great movies, great actors, great directors that never even got a nomination for an award. And this what they look like they're going to is making it an achievement show because we put it this way, last night two awards were given that should not have been given and they think it's because maybe somebody in the Academy fudges with the voting because there's no way that a guy that never got one, not got one award, could win um, best act, best supporting actor, and there's no way that Lawrence was going to win. Because I mean, I, I mean, I really heard some nasty things being said about the young lady. That she was, she was a good, she was a good decade away, learning her craft before she should be getting, you know, even considered for nomination. Well, usually most of them. I mean, this year, of course, well. Let's say um, Anne Hathaway and Jennifer Lawrence are both young. Usually, they're older. Yeah, but Hathaway at thirty has been around since she was a teenager with Disney, so she's, and she's learned. She's been nominated multiple times. They said so. that, uh, mm -hmm. that if you're going to give the award, uh, give it to the little girl in Beast of the Southern Wild because she actually looks like she's a professional, unlike kind of unlike Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer oh. Lawrence. They said Jennifer Lawrence looks like a high school kid in a high school drama. Trying to be, you know, play with the big guys, and she just, she's clumsy, she's awkward. She got the nomination. She, she got, the but they, she shouldn't have won the award. Mm -hmm. They, they said uh, the reality wanted to give it to the 86-year-old French actress, but they'd already given. Uh, she's never won. I, I don't think she's won anything across the board except the European stuff. So, and then Screen Actors Guild, I think, was going to give it to Jessica Chastain. Mm -hmm. So, but the, what happened is the last two weeks. Lawrence has come on strong because she was the, you know, I, I, I can't tell you what a lot of people said that she was, so. Mm. And Desperate Postal Service tries to find its cool factor. Oh, they're doing commercials now trying to be cool. The problem is... The post office, when was the post office ever cool? It never was cool. But I mean, um, what it is, is they're bound by union contracts that are killing them because you have a system in which they don't even have to deliver the mail. I mean, okay, well... You know, it, it, it delivers eventually. There is no date. You know, if you pay, if you pay for overnight, it supposedly be there overnight because that's a different service. But if it comes by your carrier, as long as it gets there, there is no specific day on straight mail for the delivery. Just as long as it gets there. Sometimes, I mean, we got pissed off once and filed a complaint. And you know, civil service people said, "Well, there's nothing in the the civil service rules that said it has to be a daily delivery." All they do is, you know, if the carrier gets behind, they just take it back and bring it out another day. And stricken cruise passengers bring class action against Carnival. Oh, yeah, you know, they think that what's going to happen is oh. the same thing they're doing in um, in Daytona, that they're going to offer a lump settlement to everybody on a take it or leave it because they'll fight. They uh, like they said in Daytona, they intend to fight you till you run out of money in a court of law before they'll give you anything more. They're going to give them. They said here, you, you know. Um, so what? So you you lost your arm. That'll you be worth about five bucks. Mm. Yeah. You know, are you going to be in a hospital for the rest of your life? Ten. The same thing in Carnival. Carnival is going to play hardball. Mm. And a Monty bubbleism from the Mark Twain at the Animal Kingdom. Uh, sometimes it's best to look to your past to see how to go forward.